I'm comparing meat grinders in the $50, $100, and $400 range, and the first thing we're going to look at is the construction. The first one is pretty inexpensive because it doesn't come with its own motor. You have to supply it yourself, and that is the KitchenAid mixer, and I figure a lot of people have one of these already, and so this is an easy attachment, a really cheap way of getting into grinding, especially if you don't have a lot to do. The other two both have their own motor. This one in the middle is 400 watts, whereas the big one is a three quarter horsepower and it can grind through a lot more things. So one of the things that you wanna look at pretty closely when you're buying a grinder is what is it made out of? And this first one is all metal except for one small piece of plastic, which is the bushing that goes between the grinder and the KitchenAid itself. Now, if you look at the actual auger, this one is solid metal, whereas this one over here has plastic gears at the end and what it attaches to the rest of the motor. I've made a few mistakes over the years that I've used this and I've ground them down and that means they're not gonna last as long as something that's totally metal. So if you're looking for the long-term and durability, make sure you go all metal. Another thing to look at is the size of the throat on the grinder, and that's this part right here. The bigger size, the bigger pieces of meat that you can put in there, and it's quite a bit of work to be able to chop them up small if the throat is pretty small, whereas this one is quite large. I can put big old pieces and even long pieces in there, and it won't bog down. Next up, let's look at the cut quality of the different grinders and the final product. And to prep the meat, I took two good looking Boston butts and I took the bone out and then chopped them up into one inch cubes. Now, I found that if you do it with the bone in, I saved about a dollar a pound, but you can still get them boneless if you're willing to spend a little bit more. It just depends on how much knife skills you have and whether or not that's worth it to you. Once they were chopped up, I put them in the freezer for about an hour so that way it gets nice and cold because it's a lot easier to cut through and grind the meat when it's cold than if it's hot because the fat is gonna gum these up. And time is a pretty valuable thing and so if you had something small compared to something big, you'd wanna know that the bigger one could grind a lot faster to make sure if it's worth it, especially if you have a lot of meat to be able to grind up. So what I'm doing is I'm grinding up one pound of meat in each of the grinders to put two pounds in the biggest, most expensive one, and then I'm gonna divide that one by two to figure out how long it takes, and that'll give you a good sense of what you're in for. So let's look at the grind quality of the three different meat grinders that we're testing. The first thing that I noticed was that the KitchenAid attachment didn't have the same cut quality as the other two. If you look closely at it, you can tell that the fat looks like it's a little bit smeared, whereas the other ones are super white and crisp. What that means is it's kind of just smashing it through rather than cutting it as it goes through the grind plate. And that's the same kind of thing that you would see with a meat grinder if it started to get too hot, it'll start to get a little bit mushy rather than having a nice clean grind, which means both of these two are the winners in that case. Now I can say with a mid-tier one, over time, that one absolutely gums up. If I do more than five, eight pounds, something like that, it starts to really slow down and the cut quality decreases. So let's look at how long each grinder took to go through one pound of meat, starting with the KitchenAid attachment. And that was one minute and seven seconds. Nearly twice as fast was the mid-tier, that one only took 37 seconds. And the $400 grinder came in around 45 seconds for two pounds of meat. So when you divide that in half, somewhere around 22, 23 seconds. But it's actually rated for between seven and 10 pounds of meat per minute. And the big difference between that and what I did is I spent a lot of time just trying to push the meat and load this thing up. But if you're doing a really big batch, then everything would be completely full of meat and continue to be pumping it out. It also took a while for that last bit of meat to be able to go through the grinder itself. You should also consider how difficult it is to clean up the grinder when you're done. And that's something that everybody's unfortunately gonna have to do once the sausage is done. Now these bigger grinders, they're gonna be a lot easier to get clean because everything is bigger. You can get fit your normal brushes and things in there. None of these are dishwasher safe. Don't put them in the dishwasher. I did that with one of the other ones that got a little bit of extra corrosion on there, but it still works. But that means everything's hand washed, something to think about. So based on that, you might have a good sense of which one of the grinders would work for you, but I'm gonna give some recommendations for which one might work for certain kinds of people. If you're just getting into sausage making and you're only gonna do small batches of a pound or two, and you already have the KitchenAid, then this one is actually a pretty good deal. The cut quality isn't a deal breaker, and you can deal with the extra time that it takes because it doesn't take a lot of space to store this one up. Now, if you wanna go a little bit bigger and have bigger batches, more like in the five to 10 pound range, you're gonna to wanna to go to the mid tier for sure, or even if you're gonna do it more frequently, you're gonna want the nicer grinder with a good cut so that way you can get the best quality product possible. When it comes to the $400 grinder, most home cooks aren't gonna need something like this unless they really love sausage or they're gonna be doing things all the time. In fact, I don't actually even need it. I bought it because some of my friends had drawn out for a big game and they like to share their meat with me and I wanted to help them process it too. And unfortunately, either they didn't draw out or they ended up getting tag soup coming back empty handed. Because this grinder is really only practical if you want to do at least 
a minimum of five pounds, but if you want to do something like an entire elk or deer, this one would be a must-have. There's just no way that you'd be able to do it with the other two grinders. It'd be way too frustrating. Now that you have a grinder, check out this video where I go over the burger basics of grinding your own meat for burgers. There's a lot of really good blends out there, and some of them are really juicy and add a ton of flavor that you won't get from the store-bought stuff.